everyone, I'm so glad you're here in the cave with me today because today we're building a bamboo-backed e-paid belly reflex deflex longbow. We're gonna put tip overlays on, we're gonna tiller this bow, we're gonna get into it, and we're gonna finish it out. It's gonna be great. I got some help with me today. If you've been a subscriber for a long time, you'll probably remember Trevor. Trevor, say hi to everybody. Hey everyone, it's such an honor to be able to make some bow strings for you guys. That's, that's nice, Trevor. Anyway, if you if you want to get one of these bows, if you want your hand on this bow, I actually have another one I'm making just like it. I'm going to auction them off, and I'll tell you how to get to that auction at the end of the video. Trevor, do you mind just kicking the video off for us? They don't call me Trick Shot Trevor for nothing. Okay, so here's an example of a finished tip overlay. They're actually really simple to do. All you've got to do in step one is cut down a small block of wood to one and a quarter inches long and the width of your bow. Mark out where it's going to go onto your bow, then flatten the tips of your limb so that the tip overlay will lay flat. You want these two surfaces extremely flat. Apply glue and clamp and that is it. Now if you want more information on tip overlays, check out the video right there. Now that the tip overlays are on the bow, every piece of wood's on the bow, now we can finish this thing out. The next thing I like to do is thin down the limbs to the finished limb dimension I want, which is gonna be half an inch at the tips, and that's gonna come down to about an inch at the handle section, maybe an inch and a quarter. Each handle of mine's a little bit different. I actually don't go off the exact same measurements. I just make it to feel. So depending on how big your hand is may depend on how big your handle section is. Mine, an inch and an eighth to an inch and a quarter, somewhere in there. Then after that, I just use like 220 sandpaper to lightly sand the bamboo. At that point, we got string grooves in the knocks and then we get a tiller. So let's get right into it. We got the limbs just over half an inch with final sanding, we'll take it down and then we've got the handle section, everything tapered really well. So at this point, I like to go ahead and shape the tip overlays, put the string grooves in it so I can use the tillering string to start tillering. Right here on the tip overlay, you can see it looks like there's a little void right there and there is, but we only sanded to about that point. And so I'm actually gonna take all of that part out so it'll look really good in the finish and you won't see any voids there. I like to just put a big hunk of wood on and then take it way down so it gives me a bunch of room to finish it exactly how I like to. You know how I feel about power tools. If you got them, use them. With the tip overlays, I like to kind of side down it, and that allows you to see which side you need to take off more wood. But in the end, there's not really much force on the tip overlay, so you can make them pretty thin. But as you're doing the final sanding, just look down the tip, and you can see on which side you want to remove wood, and you can make it symmetrical. It makes it look really good. I will do one last bit of sanding right before I put the finish on it, but this tip overlay is ready 
for the string grooves. The string grooves will go like this, but since we have a tip overlay, we can also cut in the back of the bow. So we'll do it both ways on both sides and match them up perfectly. It's really important that your string grooves on either side match up because if they're offset at all, that'll create your limb to twist and you don't want that at all. Once you get your string grooves cut, you want to take away a little bit of excess material right there where I drew with a Sharpie. I generally just do that with a chisel and it can go really fast and if your chisel's sharp, it's really easy and then we can just sand it later. The reason you want to take this material off is so that your string can move freely as you draw the bow back. Also, I just use a chainsaw file. If you're ever curious about any of the tools I use, I have an Amazon store where I have all the tools linked there. And that's one way you can help me out if you're gonna buy the tool anyway. If you buy it through that link, I get a little kickback for that and it helps me continue making these videos. So thank you everybody who clicks on those links and buys through them. Now, since we have the knocks cut in, it is time to start tillering. I've had people ask me, Kramer, doesn't matter which limb is the top limb and which limb is the bottom limb. And the answer with this kind of a bow layout is no, it's not. The handle is exactly in the center. But the longer answer to that is yes, it kind of does because it matters where the string's gonna lie. Nothing's the same when we're using natural raw materials like this. Every piece of wood is gonna have a little bit different characteristics. So I don't establish the top limb yet until I get a string on the bow to see which side of the handle the string lays on. And then once I see which side of the handle the string lays on, then I can decide which side needs to be the arrow rest. It'll come clear here in a second, stick with me. Lots of people floor tiller, and that's where you kind of push the wood on the ground like that. And you can see how it starts to bend and then you remove wood. And you do this in the very beginning process of tillering. But personally, I don't floor tiller. I just go ahead and put a tillering string on it put it on the tillering tree and just start right up there because I can see the bend much better than if I'm just floor tillering it like so. Now everybody's gonna have their own personal preference on how they tiller a bow. This is how I like to do it. This is a tillering string. It's got a loop on one end and then it's just knotted off on the other. And if you need a tillering string, I actually hand make these and sell these Kramerammons.com is where you can get it. This is so useful when you're tillering your bow because what this allows you to do is adjust the length of your string by tying a bowyer's knot. I've heard people call this knot many different things, but I just call it a bowyer's knot. So wrap underneath, go through the loop, and then you'll wrap on this side twice. Right there. And this allows you to have the adjustable knot that releases even after the bow strung up. Here it is again. Bring your tag end underneath, come over top, and then wrap around the other side twice. Let me know in the comments what the technical name is for this knot, but there you go, quick release knot. Tie this on one knock, and then put your loop on the other knock, and you're set up with your tilling string. So to make sure I don't overdraw, I actually just found this kitchen scale again on Amazon. That's on the store, you can pick it up. It's like $14. It's a lot cheaper than buying a bow maker's one. I just throw the scale on here, so what I can do is I can pull it down. There's 60 pound draw right there. And so instead of floor tailoring, I can just look at the bend. Right now, I can see that the right limb is just much stiffer. So I can go ahead and start removing wood on the right limb, and then I'll re-put it up there, and then just continue going back and forth, like this with the tilting string, but never drawing it above 60 pounds. And actually, this bow is gonna end up being probably a 45 pound bow, and so you really don't wanna draw it above your finished poundage. So above 45 pounds, there's no reason to draw it past that, because that's gonna be your finished poundage, and it can put undue stress on the bow limbs, now this bamboo and ipe is really tough wood so I can draw it to 60, but to play it safe, especially with other materials that are wood, I wanna drop past the finished bow poundage you're looking for. So this very first part of tailoring, I'm just eyeballing it and then I'll go up and mark the spots with a Sharpie where I think wood needs to be removed. Watch how the left limb, this one over here, bends much further. So you can see the reference lines on the wall and how this limb right here is much further down than the limb over there. So I'm gonna remove wood off this limb. When tillering, at the very beginning, you can use more aggressive tools, and the closer to the end you get, you wanna use less aggressive tools. Now, it's very easy to break a bow, so use aggressive tools as your own caution and how comfortable you feel, but if you're using a belt sander or something like that, 
you can break it very fast. I know this because I've done it. But the main tools I normally use is a cabinet scraper for a little $5 cabinet scraper. This thing is magical. I can remove wood off with this really fast and the key to this is keeping it sharp. And there's two ways to keep this sharp. You can just use a file and all you're doing is creating a burr, a 90 degree burr, and that the burr is actually what removes the wood. Or you can just use a diamond plate, rub it on the diamond plate real quick. That's what I do, I inlaid a diamond plate in my workbench, rub this on the diamond plate, and then it's as sharp as can be. Other ways to remove wood early in the tilling process is a rasp. I have a Nicholson 49 here. I use a lot on Osage bows, but I haven't used it on any of these Ipe bows. At least pretty big gouge marks, so you'd only wanna use this in the very beginning process of tillering. Another thing I've used is an orbital sander with 80 or 60 grit sandpaper. That removes quite a bit of wood pretty fast, but it's still very controllable. That's better than a belt sander, and if you really have a daring personality, use a belt sander, and if you're one of those crazy people, go hit your bow up with a bandsaw. But the point is, is to be able to have control, and in order to have control, hand tools are the best way to go. Tillering is not something you wanna go do in 30 minutes to an hour. Tillering's gonna be, for me at least, I'll probably spend an hour and a half, take a couple hour breaks to let my mind refresh and get a good look at it, take a couple more hours, maybe let a day go past, take a couple more hours, another day, do some finished sanding. I truly believe you can trade skill for time. And so if you haven't done a lot of bows before, take your time, you're not in a rush, just take as much time as possible, save yourself frustration, and make a good bow. I believe anybody can make a bow. I'm gonna show you and give you the tools you need to make a good bow, but just take your time on the tutoring process. If you're doing an Ipe bamboo back bow, take your time especially because very little amount of wood you remove makes a big, big difference with this type of wood. So keep that in mind, take your time. And if I were to give you one tip, is to take your time. If you don't have a tilling tree like the one behind me, you can make a tilling stick like this one. If you're interested in either of those, I have a video on how to make these, why they're important, and how to use them. In between each iteration of removing wood off of your bow, you want to exercise the limbs. And what I mean by this is draw it to your finished poundage, so like 45 pounds. Do that 20 to 30 times. This will help the wood forget its memory and adjust to the wood you just removed. And so it's very important to exercise the limbs. So the process is put the bow up on the tilling tree, mark where you wanna take off wood, take it off the tilling tree, remove the wood, put it back up, Exercise the limbs 30 times, pulling it to the finished poundage you want. And then, after exercising the limb, you can remark it where you need to remove wood. And we're gonna continue this process. I'm gonna speed it up and continue this process until I have a string on the bow. But pay attention to the way the bow moves and you'll see where I'm taking off wood and how I'm getting the limbs to bend evenly. Oh, and real quick, the last thing, I like to orient the limbs in the same direction each time I put it up on the tillering tree. And so, I'll just mark one side of the limb to keep the right side the same the entire time this just helps you keep it clear in your mind and remember if what you corrected actually did correct or if you need to remove more wood So we've got a tilling string on this. It's not quite to brace height yet, but what you can do is you can go ahead and sight down it, and most likely the string's not gonna be exactly in the center. Normally it's gonna be on one side or the other side of the center. Whatever side the string is on is the side you want your arrow rest on. That way the string and the arrow line straight up with your target. If you were to put the arrow rest on the opposite side where the string lays on, your arrow is gonna be sticking way out to the side and you don't want that. So that's personally how I determine which limb is the top limb and which limb is the bottom limb. So once you're at this point and you have a string on it, now I determine the top limb and bottom limb and I go ahead and mark them. And it's personal preference, sometimes I'll go ahead and shape the handle, sometimes I won't. Shaping the handle is really, really simple. I just put my hand on the handle and then I mark right above my hand and that's where my arrow rest is gonna be. I cut an arrow rest in, just make sure you don't cut it too deep because your bow could break there. We have a non-working handle, so that's the reason it's okay to cut a handle rest, but you don't have to cut a handle rest if you don't want to, you can shoot right off your hand. Then I just go ahead and shape the wood on the handle to fit my hand right. This is 100% personal preference. Rasp I showed you earlier, those work really good if you have hand tools to just rasp it away. Or if you have a spindle sander, that's what I use. I, I like to use that as well and that goes pretty fast. 
It'll save you a little bit of time, but it's not necessary whatsoever. Now after shaping the handle, continuing on the tillering tree, this is what we've got. It's still way too powerful, so we have a lot of tillering left. I wanna show you something real quick that has helped me out with my tillering a lot. This right here is what's called a tillering gizmo. It helps you know where you need to remove wood off of the bow. Again, I made a video on how to make this. This is something that I would consider making. It's not necessary though. Something you can use instead is your little four inch cabinet scraper. It can do the exact same thing. Let me show you how these work. So on the bow right here, the pencil protrudes through the tillering gizmo. I'll rub it on the belly of the bow and it's gonna mark the exact spots where I need to remove wood. It's as simple as that. If you need the pencil to come out more, you screw it in or you unscrew it to make it protrude less. And then you can just rub it on. And this is my next step, is I go ahead and mark where I need to remove wood without drawing the bow at all once I get it strung up. And I just mark and I get this brace height bending perfectly and then from there, I'll tiller more down. If you don't have a tillering gizmo and you just have your scraper, you can also just rub your scraper and look at the gap and wherever the gap's bigger is where you need to remove wood. It does the exact same thing, it's just by eye and it's a little slower with a scraper, but you can accomplish the exact same goal with a scraper. Now that I've got the pencil marks on the bow exactly where I need to remove wood, I darken them up with a Sharpie. And so I'll mark all the way across the limb like this. No pencil, pencil there. And that shows you exactly where you need to remove the wood. So once you grab your scraper, you just want to remove the wood in those exact locations. If you need to remove wood up near the top, you can turn your scraper and still remove wood. But that allows you to remove wood up here without ever taking the bowstring off. It makes tilling a lot faster. Now this is continued on and on and on until you start bending the bow. And as you start bending the bow, only drawing it to your finished draw weight, in this case 45 pounds, keep removing wood. And you do this until you make it to your draw length. Once you're at your draw length, you stop and your tiller should be perfect. You can't add any wood back on, so take your time with this. Again, can't stress that enough, but the tiller really, really matters. If you can get good at tillering, this is what makes a good bow. This is what makes a good bow. This is why some bows shake like crazy in the hand and some bows feel so smooth to shoot. It's the tillering. It's very important, so take your time on this if you're gonna take your time on anything. Welcome back, it's the next day. I'm still here, you're still here, and the bow is still here, and it's almost done. The reveal's coming very soon. I've got some final tillering left and some sanding left. I'm gonna give you a quick tip on how I finish out the bow, then I'll show you me doing it. When finishing the bow, I like to sand it. Start with low grit sandpaper, move up high. I normally end at 220. Then I sand everything with steel wool. That makes it extremely smooth, and then applying a finish is personal preference. You can do a fairly natural finish like boiled linseed oil or true oil, anything like that that soaks into the wood or you can put a finish on it that coats over top and creates a layer like polyurethane or lacquer or something like that. I like polyurethane because it's just so easy and it's so durable. It works really well. Just get a spray can. That works fantastic. Also, you can stain the bamboo if you're gonna use the bow for hunting or something like that and you want it darker. That's also an option. On that note, I've talked enough. My throat's getting tired so let's just finish making this bow.
Boom, baby, that is it. Here's the finished bow. Not only so does it look decent, but the performance is pretty stinking well. It shoots 171 feet per second. That's at a 28 inch draw. And here's a chart of all the draw weight at the draw links right here. Guys, as I promised, this is going to one of you guys. If anybody wants it, I'm starting an auction. The first link below is the auction to this bow. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it up on eBay. The starting bid is $1, so rush over there, throw your bid in, and this will be up for a week. I hope if you're building one of these bows, this might have helped you out a little bit. I know I couldn't fit everything in there, but I did the best I could with keeping this in a manageable watching time. Thanks again for watching. I can't wait to make the next video. You guys have a great day. We'll see you later.